Hi, my name's Sally Wood and today for Be Inspired, I would like to show you how to make a pair of basic unlined curtains. You will need a sewing machine and an iron, a pair of scissors, some pins, some cotton thread, a metal ruler, and a hard ruler of some kind, whether it's this, or I actually have used a paint stirrer and marked off the increments that I will be using for this project. The fabric that you can use can be anything from voile, cotton, jacquard, or even chenille. Most fabrics, except for velour and velvet, would be suitable for this project. Place the bottom of the metal tape on the floor and extend up towards the top of the curtain. In this case the top of the rail is 79 and a half inches. If I was to be using a plain fabric I would just allow 30 centimeters or 12 inches for all the turnings. But seeing as this has a pattern repeat which to find the pattern repeat if I measure from the base of these grapes to the base of the next set of grapes is just shy of 18 inches or 46 centimeters. I have to bear that in mind when I'm cutting these. I will measure up. I'm going to measure off my 79 and a half inches for the curtain, which won't take very long. My 79 and a half inch is there with my 12 inch or 30 centimeters allowance comes to here. In order to make sure that I have the pattern repeats, I will show you how I work that out. Taking the top of my fabric, my curtain fabric, to the bottom of the curtain fabric, you can see my 79 and a half inches is marked here and here is my 12 inch seam allowance. So this will be the top of my curtain and that is the existing base of my curtain. And as you can see, my pattern repeat overlaps. In order to make sure that both curtains are level, I will put, draw down the fabric to the, bottom, to the top of the next pattern repeat and I will cut it here. This now is the base of my next curtain. I like to be able to fold the fabric if there's a pattern repeat so that it's always even at the bottom and in order to do that I will usually fold the fabric in on itself like this and you can see how the fabric matches. Having done that I stretch it out and I get my scissors and I cut along the fold. An easy way to get the next panel to match is smooth out the base of the second curtain, place the panel that you have just cut on top and match the pattern up as you go. By measuring the panel out like this to the top, you can see where the top of the first panel runs, you clip that as before, and both panels will match. Some fabrics will have a small arrow pointing to where the top of the fabric is, and some fabrics do not, but if not, there's usually a way to tell whether fruit hangs down, Leaves tend to hang down and flowers tend to go up, except for if they're big roses and then they tend to hang down. So sometimes you have to look very, very carefully. In this case, it was indicated. Now, I'm going to measure up six inches 
from the bottom of my fabric to create the hem. I usually do it in three points. Each end and the center I measure. So there's my first point. My second point is in the center and I will pull that taut one end to the other and iron very carefully to the center without burning myself. I will move the fabric up and I will measure my six inches at the other end of the fabric, pinch it, start in the center and iron towards my fingers. This creates a straighter edge than if you measure all the way along the bottom. Having done that, I will fold this raw edge into the crease and up. You should be able to see that. And then I repeat, pushing it into the center and iron towards the other edge. Always do hems first. And now I have a nice crisp edge for the bottom of my curtain panel. Okay. In order to make sure that curtain panels match, one way of doing this is to take the one that you have just folded and carefully fold the second one up to match. The, pat the uh, fabric here, the pattern is identical and I will start ironing at that end towards the centre. To the next m major mark and then to the very end. As I had used the second panel I had cut, the um, cuts were very much straighter. The original panel that I cut was slightly off. So I will fold it into the center like previously and I will adjust it so that this pattern will match that pattern and iron it. And you will notice that it's a little bit shy of the crease mark and that will be fine. Having folded it over to match the first side, I will iron down and just complete creases on both sides of that hem. When I sew this hem, I'm going to run this edge of the fabric, the top of this, the hem, along this ridge here on my foot. And then it should keep a really straight sewing line. I have my stitch on single, so it will be a straight line, not zigzag, and it's about a 3.5 in length. You don't want it too long and you don't want it too short. If it's too short, it really shows up, and if it's too long, it just doesn't look very neat. If you hold your fabric like that on one end, taut, and on the other end, slightly taut, it should run smoothly. might feel that they need to pin their fabric, their hems into place, in which case always put your pin at a right angle at intervals. And I wouldn't go much further than about a hand width, which is about four to five inches, generous four to five inches. This allows the sewing machine to sew over the pins and not get snagged up. I don't. 
I have been sewing for a very long time. So do whatever you feel is easiest for you and more comfortable. When pressing up the side hems, measure across your two inches and eyeball a place which would be memorable. So I've just decided on the inside of these fruits. And if I measure there and there and pull it taut and iron it, all I have to do for the next length, hold it taut, press the next one and iron it up. This makes life a lot easier than than uh, re-measuring every time. As with the bottom hem, just roll in the sides into the crease and continue pressing all the way up one side of the fabric. And then when sewing the side, carefully roll up the little tags that might show like that and fold them under so that they're hidden. Then pop it underneath your sewing machine foot and sew all the way up to the top and then down the other side of the curtain panels at each one of them and then carry on going as before with the bottom hem you need to fold the fabric up slightly and pull it across and then fold it but when you come down towards the hem what you need to do is push the inside seam a little bit higher than the front and hold on tight because when you sew it the top fabric gets pushed down and it can easily overhang the bottom hem which you do not want. Nice and even. Both as ends. before, I'm going to use three points of reference as I measure up for the curtains. I need 79 and a half inches, and I usually divide that into 30 inch um, lengths. It's easier to work out then. So I'm going to pin my first 30. This is round about the centre of the fabric. So I'm going to pin my second 30 and then, oops a daisy, I'm going to pull the fabric right over so I don't have to go up and down the length of the table too many times and I'm going to smooth it out and put my third 30. in place. Having done that, I'm going to pull the fabric down with my 30 inches at the edge of the table, like so, and start again. So this time I will have makes my 60 inches, same in the centre, just run my finger along the edge of the uh, pin so I know where it is, mark my next 30, giving me a 60 inch distance there, and as before I'm going to just pull all the fabric over so I can get that last edge. Move it out. Put my ruler back on there, feel the edge of the pin, move up, and put my 30 inches along the side. So now I have 60 inches pinned out. And now I need 19 and a half inches to give me my 79 and a half length and here we go 
as before. I measure it to this one end. Up the centre. Put my finger on where that pin is, to the centre. 19 and a half inches there. The daisies. There we go. Oop, I think that's about three. Just the top layer. And then again, on the far edge of the fabric. My 19 and a half. Putting my finger on the pin. And then another pin here. The reason why I don't move my pins is because it's easier if I mismatch to double check. These are short curtains, they're only for me, so I will not double check. Usually I pull it all the way back if it's for a customer and double check everything that I've put in. Now I'm going to fold the fabric over again to its back and smooth it out. And at my 19 and a half inch pins, which are here. I'm going to fold it over like this. Oops, daisy. And iron it in place. So starting at this end with the first pin, leave the pin in, press it, pull the pin out, go to the center of the fabric. Fold it along the pin, press towards the pin, go over the centre of the pin, and then again to the end. Just hold on to where the pin is folded and work your way down. And that is complete. The next part of the project is to finish topping them. So, my the ruler that I marked off for four inches, I'm going to place on top of the fabric on the fold. And very carefully, I'm going to pull the fabric forward so I don't cut into both sides. Put my scissors down and cut. Put the four inches on the fold and cut towards the edge of the ruler. And again until I've completed the full length of this cut. Doesn't have to be perfect. as even as you possibly can. Let's say always make sure you cut through the right piece. I have personally cut both sides, usually when I'm tired. As before you need to fold the raw edge into the crease and then once again, press all the way down to the other end of your curtain. This is your pocket lining, nice and simple. side seams the rod pocket needs to be pulled back slightly and also tucked under before sewing about an eighth of an inch two millimeters should be fine 
As with the side seam, again, just make sure that it's all pushed back and uh, the rod pocket should be finished off really neatly. I will be doing a second row of stitching along about a foot width in from the top, about a quarter of an inch. That just holds the rough edge in place and when you put it on the rod, it should stop it catching and fraying. As with the beginning of the second row of stitches, just push the inside back slightly and finish sewing that top edge off. last stage just as I'm going to be pressing up is the time to make sure all pins have been removed like that. Any thread tails have been cut off if you haven't already cut them off like this. Nice and simple and then spread the fabric out as well as you can and start pressing them up for hanging, like this. So give special attention to where it's rather folded, otherwise don't worry too much, most of it will hang out. Okay, I've removed the old curtains that I had up, and I'm just going to Feed these onto the rods and replace the, uh, the curtains. Won't take a minute. Oops, a daisy. <laughs> Should pop out. Curtains are on the rod. Oops, Daisy. You can shake the curtains out and then replace the rod as before. Nice and simple. Oops, Daisy. Thank you for watching this video on how to make basic unlined curtains. My name is Sally Wood for Be Inspired. See you next time. Ciao!